Sebesta, who is not here right now. Okay. So we'll skip him and we'll go to Ray Smith on the first one. Ray. Right. Right. Uh, number five is a resolution awarding a bid for temporary labor for uh, use in a weekly yard waste pickup. Um, this is something that has an option of a three-year rollover. Their prices are gauged upon the minimum wage increases every year, so we have to rebid it. Um, we had a bid opening a few weeks ago, and there was only one bidder in um, I had it attached if you need to quote. It's like 23 something an hour. Uh, about a dollar 77 increase from last year's. Any question? Uh, number six is a resolution authorizing the purchase of a trailer mounted hot box for use by the highway department. Um, this is a bonded item for 2020. Just a replacement of a, a replacement another box? Of one, so we'll be getting rid of the 80s, one that we currently have. Uh, number seven is a resolution authorizing the purchase of a 10-wheel dump truck, plow and sander, and attachments for use by the highway department. Um, this is a, just another ongoing effort to replace our aging fleet. Uh, this is also bonded for 2020. Number eight, uh, resolution authorizing the uh, purchase of a packer truck for use in the uh, yard waste pickup. Um, again, replacing <coughs> aged equipment, but also a binded item. Number nine, a resolution authorizing the purchase of a New Holland Workmaster tractor and attachments for use by the highway department. Uh, this is also replacing an aged item uh, number 10, a resolution authorizing a purchase of a three-wheeled field maintainer by use for the parks department for maintaining infields and uh, sand lots, volleyball courts. It's all used for. Um, we'll be uh, auctioning off the old one and replacing it with this one. Uh, number 11, so Resolution authorizing purchase of a John Deere compact excavator for use in the parks department, uh, ditching and parks projects and stuff like that. That's also a bonded item. 12, uh, resolution authorizing the sale of certain surplus ton equipment uh, through public auction. Um, I submitted a list. I'll be doing some amendments to that. Um, Got some recommendations from the controller's office, and there was also an item that I forgot to put on there. So uh, I'll be making some amendments to that before the meeting. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. you either one. Okay, Alexis Kim. Um, so 13 is a resolution ratifying uh, MOA with Highway Union. It's regarding a leave donation policy for employees who are out on unpaid um, family medical leave of absence for like a birth of a child. And I, this is something that came into fruition this morning. So it, it's tentative. It hasn't been approved. It hasn't been exchanged with Highway Union yet, but I'll provide copies to the town board. So just Highway, not the entire town? So the request came from an employee. It's a little bit of a longer backstory, but I don't need the long yeah, backstory. I, I think it's something that would be a great policy to put in our handbook and definitely could be applicable, okay. but it came through in the request of the county. Does someone it, does others do it. Yeah. So. Okay. This is something we don't have though. We, right. did, we did not opt in to paid uh, either the New York state paid family leave. And then once you use all your vacation time, sick time and comp time, um, you can stay out of work for 12 weeks, but you don't get paid. So this is people within the highway union willing to donate their sick leave as I can um, speak to more detail um, later this evening during executive session, but it would allow them to basically say, here, I don't need 10 hours of my sick leave. You can have it. And that would allow the person to be paid and not be on unpaid leave. We do that in the county. Yeah. yeah. And it just said, yeah. Do we do it in the county? And it's like town, yeah. county wide, or is it just for you? 
Yeah. It's countywide. I yeah. yeah. It's subject to bargain, something that's in a lot of handbooks. Like I said, it's in uh, Bethlehem's 2020 handbook, Glenville's. It's just a trend for places that didn't opt in to paid family leave. So it's something more consider. pertinent now, now today than ever before. Oh, that's good yes. Oh, okay. great. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Lori Peretti. Uh, number 14 is a resolution to appoint our spring soccer referees. Spring soccer starts uh, April 20th, so I needed to get um, our referees on a resolution before the next meeting. Um, number 15 is a resolution authorizing the submittal of uh, grant application to the Niskanen Community Foundation. Um, we are hoping to for both the community programs and for the senior program. And number 16, resolution to uh, appointing two van drivers uh, program aides for the senior center. One as a um, the initial bus driver and then one or two as a backup, just so we never run into any problems again. And number 17 is just a duplicate of uh, number 14. Anybody have any questions? No. no. Thank Thanks, Lori. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so 18, I understand that this is something that's annual. It's the annual license agreement with uh, Maureen, I don't know how you pronounce her last name. Yes, to use a portion of Lions Park. Um, I think she wanted to start in May. So it's, I'm just reusing the same license agreement. Uh, 19, this is resolution authorizing supervisor to execute an agreement with all points media for advertising on the senior center bus. And I have a tentative. Um, it, uh, Linda O'Brien was approached by a company that wanted to put advertisements on her bus for I think it was either $400 a month. It's a month to month contract, meaning it's not as if we're locked into it. Um, I think that the status of this was Paul Sebesto wanted to see if he could get better offers from other companies who wanted to do advertising. It's just a consideration. Uh, it seems that's consistent with what other municipalities do. Um, yeah. If they're offering to do it and it's yeah. free, no work, and Paul doesn't have to go out as well, we could try it on a trial basis. Yeah. And even, if, like I said, it's month to month, so Paul finds a better offer. Have uh, we seen this? Usually if you see it, you, I, you know, it's this bus was donated by whatever organization or that sort of thing. I don't know that I've ever seen one that so has specific advertising on it. I and have, I um, uh, they sent me uh, mock-ups of what it would look like. It's just an advertisement. Like It kind of looks like the size of a CDTA bus when it's like health insurance with pictures of like of people on it. It doesn't say like donated by or like sponsored by. It just, it's like a billboard on the side of the bus. And what are the size of the ads? I'm not sure. Probably the size of the I, bus. I can, <laughs> uh, I can maybe help out a little. Uh, the ads are they're proposing a two foot by five foot ad on both both sides of the vehicle, and the reason I uh, reached out to our health broker was because this is a health insurance advertisement, and I felt it was only reasonable to reach out to MVP who does handles our um, our um, Medicare and CDPHP to give them an opportunity at have them see us driving around in a van with someone else's ad on it. Whether or not we, Are we get more money yeah. or not we, Are we get more money. money? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, it's more money would be good. It was. Yeah, we could spur a little bit. Bidding more, that'd be fine. Uh, bidding more is fine too, but you know. <laughs> well, you know what? What if they all want to be on it? Then it's going to look like a rolling billboard for you know all no. these organizations. And I, I don't. Well, we don't think have that's to That's a good idea. It. I don't. Yeah, well, I don't think that was really. Yeah. But anyway, that's all. I have. Okay, and then twenty. This is something that was sent and forwarded to everyone on the town board, and I think it was like the very beginning of the year. Um, a ceremonial resolution was requested by E.D. Canizzo for artists that participated in, it's called Studio E, it's an epilepsy art program. Their artwork, I believe, is displayed in this room. Mm -hmm. Also, as an aside note, she had requested that everybody on the town board wear purple at the next regular town board meeting. Regular? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then one other thing, I just got an email like five minutes ago from Jeff Scardino saying... He's upstairs. Oh, he's upstairs? <laughs> you walked past him. Oh, really? I never met him in person. I see his name on this. He says, looks like that time of year again. We need a draft of the license agreement by Friday. So I will. Okay. We can, if it's that urgent, what we can do. I looked into this a little bit of research. We could sign it and then ratify it at the regular town board meeting. It's not something that's recommended for uh, regular practice, but it's permissible. 
What, what is this for, Alexis? I'm not. It's a license that. agreement for, for what? Is it for uh, Avon Cross? Park? Cross. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we do one. Okay. I th we were actually talking how we do one Two, in the it? fall and one in the spring, but we should just make it a year long one. The yeah. box. And the, um, the box. Because I felt like just yesterday that. doing that. Park, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So yeah. Aqueduct. Right. Okay. Thank you. I think it's both the box and the Aqueduct Park. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. they're on yeah, different yeah, sides, but maybe there's two different ones. I just know that it's for the box. Okay. 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 So I'm going to add that license agreement. All right, any questions? Nope. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Laura Robertson. So number 21 is a resolution establishing fees for subdivision and site plan applications. And I looked at the code also earlier today, and it's actually – um, outlined in, I think, Chapter 98. So I'm in the same boat as Chief. We would actually have to call a resolution for a public hearing to amend uh, Chapter 98 of the zoning or of the town code. Um, and that's just because right now we're only allowed to collect fees for major subdivision sketch plans, but we actually do a ton of work for minor subdivision sketch plans. So we wanted to make that $100. And um, we don't differentiate site plan applications between tenant change and like, you know, huge new building site plan applications. Um, and so like when tenant changes are going into buildings, it's a pretty relatively simple review. So we just wanted, essentially normally it's $200. We wanted to set tenant change at a hundred. Um, resolution number 22 is a resolution adopting a shade structure policy. This is coming from our climate smart communities uh, task force. It's something that the town could get points to um, continue to try to get bronze certified. And it essentially just outlines you know, doing a review of what shade structures you have in your parks, like trying to continue to provide shade and it's a mitigation measure for um, as the heat gets, you know, more hard for people to deal with. And a lot of, um, I mean, it, it, it ranks like what is the shade structure and what is the best um, one to put in there. And, you know, it's everything from pavilions down to trees. So we have like a preliminary one and then we would bring it uh, forward. And I know Alexis wants to make some changes to it, but could potentially be ready for the end of this month. And that way we can submit it in time for the April submittals. That would be great. And number 23 is a resolution approving a pesticide free lawn care outreach program. We talked about this in my committee meeting. Uh, one of our uh, CAC members was in Erie County and saw these lawn signs on people's lawn and it's a um, safe place for gnomes, like little garden gnomes. And it's essentially like uh, branding people who choose not to put pesticides on their yard with like a happy sign. And um, we just think it's a really good way to get the word out there for people to be paying attention. And maybe, you know, what is a safe place for gnomes? Like, oh, you're not using pesticide on your lawn? Maybe it still looks good. I mean, there's a possibility that they'll be putting them in front of I know we <laughs> talked about this for a while over the summer, last yeah. summer. And when I took John's committee for a while, I would love to be able to do this. So yeah. is it possible that we can move forward on this? Yeah, I think so. And so the I other thing I'd like to be able to do, and maybe we could talk to the Climate Smart people, I'm very loud, um, <laughs> is rain barrels. Yeah. Can you look into rain barrels? Yeah, the Climate okay. Smart Community Task Force. Does that make you happy when I ask you? Yeah, no, I love okay, rain yeah, barrels. Yeah. Signs about non-pesticides and yeah. rain barrels. Yeah, I would love to do that. New York City's given them out. Yeah. I know we're not New York City, but if there's some program out there and we can make that happen, I would love to be able to make that happen in your committee, in my committee, in our committees together. I would love that, Laura. Yeah, and they have sort of a path forward for rain barrels that um, DEC has outlined. So that would be great. Yeah, we'll look into that. Um, and then number 24 is the resolution awarding a contract for the construction of docks and improvements at Aqueduct Park. This is the permanent structures that we're putting along the dock to moor it. It's got some stiff arms. And then there's a fair amount of work that we're doing on the bulkhead and things to make the dock stronger, more publicly accessible, and um, just kind of general upgrades to the park, including landscaping and um, stormwater management. And so that bid is closing on Thursday, and we're hopeful to have some responsive bidders and be able to award it at the end of the month. Uh, number 25 is a resolution calling for a public hearing on a special use permit for an average density uh, plan development located at 2538 River Road, also known as the Celts Farm. We had a lot of discussion about this at the planning board meeting last night. We had a, a pretty lengthy public uh, hearing, public input. I think it was about an hour and a half of comments. And... Um, you know, there's a, and I think I've circulated the map, there's a proposal for, I think, 24 uh, mix of single family homes and twin townhouses along River Road. And it's currently proposed with a connection to Windsor. 
and the planning board is working on, you know, what's the best configuration to recommend to the town board. But when we were looking at timelines, just because this isn't one where you would want to combine a public hearing with action, I would not recommend that. Um, I think you should do call for a public hearing at the end of March that gives the planning board a month and a half to be working on their recommendation to you. Uh, hold the public hearing in March with attention, or sorry, hold the public hearing in April. And then, you know, you still have another month before you take action. Um, and that's, you know, that's just the nature of your meetings. And I feel like that timeline is probably um, not terrible. And uh, we worked on it at the planning board last night. The developer was amenable. Everybody was sitting in the audience heard. And um, we're going to be sending out and trying to set up additional meetings for comments from people. And so hopefully we'll have a really good recommendation package from, for you, you know, in April. I know this is a lot of extra work, but uh, speaking for myself, but I'm sure everybody, we appreciate it. Thank yeah. you very much. Well, it's worth, it's worth a lot the of these projects have just kind of gotten ahead of us yeah. in the last couple of years. And I really appreciate everything you're doing here, Laura. Thank you. Okay. Laura, that's zoned single uh, family residential right now? Yeah, R1, low density residential. So if you were only to allow single family residents in there, how many would there be? I mean, he's claiming 28. There's wetlands mitigation that would have to come from 28. You could theoretically get, you know, the planning board has determined you could theoretically get 24 single family homes, like, you know, 18,000 square mm -hmm. foot single family home, something like you see everywhere right. in the town of Miskuna. You could get those on there. And what does he want to do again? It's an average density development, which is why it's coming to the town board. It's a special use permit. And essentially, it allows you to reduce the bulk zoning requirements. So normally, you'd need like 100 feet along the road. You can reduce it all the way down to 50. And that trade-off is that you have a lot more open space um, for the residents or the community. So he's, you know, as proposed, he's got a buffer. It's like a like a horseshoe shape. And he's got a buffer that goes across the whole thing. He's trying to preserve as much trees as he can. There's a buffer to the people who live in Briar Ridge. Um, and, you know... Like we talked about a finance committee, there's a, you know, there, nobody like to see any of those trees come down and not treat. Like people are just tired of trees coming down. So the more that we can conserve this habitat and kind of shrink the footprint of these single family homes, the better. Yes. And I think what's frustrating for a lot of our residents is they're under the assumption that the town can just prevent this type of development. Totally. Right. And we can't really do that. We just have to make sure that it happens in a, a good natural um, economically smart fashion. Yeah, and sustainable, and try and incorporate all the best management practices that we can. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Mm -hmm. hey, thank, you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Matt, want to step by? Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. How was your vacation? <laughs> Extended. <laughs> Luck, time to look at your pictures from Italy then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, number 26 is a, a resolution authorizing the supervisor to execute a contract to accept um, organic waste at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, it's a tentative resolution. We are at the end of our pilot uh, high strength waste at the wastewater plant. And we're, we've submitted or, um, Bartley Judas has submitted on, on the town's behalf to the state for um, approval of the pilot and acceptance of all the, all the, um, the data that was collected during the pilot. And once we have the feedback from the state, it opens up the availability to uh, modify our existing contract with, with Pepsi uh, and also looking to other haulers to accept waste. So we wanted to get the things rolling so that when we do get the okay from the state, we can move forward. 27 um, is a resolution. Uh, we just spoke to Paul. It's a little different than how it's written here, but it's to grant authority to the superintendent of water and sewer to sign and act as the town engineer. Um, Rich Pollock, when he was the former superintendent of water and sewer, there was a similar resolution passed, which gave him the authority to sign subdivision plats, maps, uh, and other things that I don't feel comfortable signing at state town engineer. And I'm, mm -hmm. my official title is superintendent of water and sewer, even though I'm doing that job. So it's a resolution that I believe Alexis and Paul are working on to clarify that. 28, um, 
is a resolution authorizing the supervisor to sign a consent order associated with the sewer treatment plant. Um, it's not the main permit for the plant. It's a side permit for uh, that oversees the uh, stormwater for the for the plant. Um, the former operator at the plant uh, failed to do some uh, re reporting of some data, a collection of data um, having to do with stormwater. Um, we've we've already talked to the state and we've addressed all the the concerns, but it's it's a it's an older violation. We just have to pay the, the fine and move forward. 29 is a resolution uh, approving the utility warrants for residential uh, for the second half of last year. Bills will be going out uh, the first week of April. 30 is a resolution authorizing the supervisor to sign a memorandum of agreement with the uh, water and sewer union uh, that would allow for flexibility within uh, for the employees if they want to move to a title, for example, a, tra a training or a trainee title um, without taking a pay cut. We want to encourage people to move, uh, improve their, their situation. Um, but right now, the way the structure is, they actually would take a pay cut to, to advance their career. 31 is the resolution authorizing payment for the repair of the dehumidification system at the water treatment plant. Um, it's a system that removes excess moisture in some of the buildings. Uh, complete replacement of the system is about $96,000. Uh, a repair is only 16,000. So looking to get approval to make repairs. I, think, I believe we can extend the life of that system for at least five, 10 years. 32 is a resolution awarding the contract um, for a fuel dispensing system uh, for use by the water and sewer, police, fire department, and um, town highway. It's funded by a grant. Uh, Josh Hawley and I have been working on this for over two years, and we finally have the project ready to go out to bid. It's gonna be in the paper Thursday, and we'll have bid opening prior to the meeting and we can award a contract. Uh, 33 uh, is something that was added while I was away. Um, it, added, it was added to my committee. <laughs> it's an issue that was raised during the emergency preparedness events that okay. you were prevented from coming to because you were actually prepared. Um, I sent an email about it this morning. Okay. Um, apparently, we have a large cluster of deaf folks in town who have felt um, left behind it relates to town government. They've met with the chief. They say they've met with other people. They've addressed town board. Um, they're looking for on it as they would request. Um, so it wouldn't be every single meeting, which, um, but as they request it, we would accommodate that. And I believe a lot of the other towns are moving in this direction as well. Okay. And the state does it. There's a state contract list okay. for it. sign language interpreters. Thank you. Uh, 34 is a ceremonial resolution. The sewer treatment plant upgrade um, was awarded the American Public Works Association statewide award for project of the year. Um, we, we won the, the Capital District Award about three months ago, and now this is the, the state level. So um, just thank you for everybody for the support of the project. Yeah. And uh, congratulations. congratulations. We're very proud of you. Yeah, congratulations. It's, it's been a team effort. It's been, I think it's five years now. So Rich and myself and the former oper current operator, Martin LeJudas and ESG have all worked to get this to where we are. So um, I believe the ceremony for the award is later on this month. Um, I can provide the information. Uh, and then one additional resolution that we talked about at, at finance uh, is just to permanently appoint a maintenance worker in the water and sewer department. Um, his uh, one year is almost up, and um, I don't want to miss the opportunity to to get it on the the agenda so we can appoint him. So I have. Thank, Thank you, you, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Chief.
Good evening. Uh, number 35, a resolution authorizing the supervisor to execute any and all necessary documents for the acceptance of grant funding from the Divi uh, Division of Criminal Justice Services for fingerprinting equipment. Uh, the state is mandating new fingerprinting policies. They're going to a palm print um, and some other changes. The equipment we have, uh, along with most of the state agencies, don't meet those requirements. So DCG has put out a grant. It's a 50% matching grant. <clears throat> and um, we were awarded $9,800, um, which would cover half the purchase for the new equipment. Uh, that's mandated for that. Uh, number 36, a resolution authorizing the sale of certain surplus weapons. We have uh, three pistols and two rifles uh, that are not utilized. The pistols were part of a uh, previous generation firearm that we used. Uh, so those three are no longer applicable and the two surplus uh, rifles. Um, we intend to use the uh, proceeds of that to purchase some simunition uh, equipment, which allows us to do some reality-based training using a non-lethal firearm that fires uh, small projectiles um, to simulate, you know, gunfire. Um, so that'll work right into the reality-based training that we've been training for, or sending instructors uh, for, so we can begin that project. Uh, number 37, a resolution appointing police officer uh, this is going to be a lateral transfer of an officer from another agency in the capital region. Um, and I'll have all the information uh, available for that. Um, by the meeting, I can actually send out the uh, details and resume of the officer to everybody if they'd like to see that as well. So this is instead of a new recruit? Correct. And there will be a salary differential, I assume? There'll be uh, because uh, the officer has... Um, been on for a number of years in another agency mm -hmm. um, and they've already you know, met all the academy requirements and everything. It'll be just a short uh, field training to orient them to our procedures and sure. uh, records keeping and that kind of thing, then they'll be ready to go. So we won't have the year and, well, the year to get uh, a new recruit up and running. So it's a- uh, So that will save us money? It will. It will save us money because we'll have somebody on the road more immediately. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're not having the officer through uh, the academy in a three month sure. training uh, process. Uh, but the salary will be salary will be right? a, I mean, a more uh, a experience higher. rate. The last lateral we took, uh, and I don't remember what year that was, um, that was um, Sergeant Frenia. He had come over from the Schenectady Police yep. Department. And we started him um, at a higher rate uh, in the contract sure. because of his experience. So uh, looking at this officer, we can do um, a similar thing. Okay. Longer experience in the job. Um, so it'd probably be one step higher than, than uh, what Sergeant Frenier had come in at. So we have that money in the budget to do that? I don't even know who I'm asking this um, question. I have money Pesta. for the recruit in the budget. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the differential is. So then we'd be looking at um, from May because it's oh, a May I, first appointment. I'm going to ask a lot of questions. Get this answer. I'm, I'm just trying to think of what uh, the it, it's it's somewhere around I believe um, eight to nine thousand dollars over and above what we have. Uh, right. So eight to nine thousand dollars every year because they're starting at a higher thing than a recruit. So so this is not one time eight nine ten thousand dollar hit. It's no, permanently an eight were, nine thousand uh, dollar hit to you. Increase your budget. Year, a three-year um, officer per our contract. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's as if they're starting in their third year. Sure. Um, and then they go up with regular steps till they max out at a six. -year. That's where. So it's Chief, still, I it's read really the, a three-year. I read in the minutes. I think it's a it's a female officer, right? Yeah, I really don't want to go too much. Yeah, I didn't ask any of those okay. questions. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was I, I, I didn't know that yeah. was off the I was that thinking way. it was a good thing to have a diverse, you know, just to have the diverse plug for that but Certainly. and the and experience I, is obviously very valuable too absolutely yeah. and, and as i said i can send out uh the resume to each of you yeah um so you can look over her uh yeah her credentials yeah um they are credentials but, but beyond that so financially 
we save money by not having the initial no, we don't save any money. training process. But uh, then, well, you have a person on the road know. rather than sitting yes. in the academy for six months right. and then a three month training program um, within the department where they're actually now you have an officer who's actually, you know, working as a regular officer within a month and a half or so. Yes. So then you, it's not like you lose that savings, but just from a financial aspect, then that savings kind of gets washed out because you're starting somebody at a higher amount. So you're missing out on a national the initial three or four works of a lower, a lower salaried employee. Right. Um, and benefit package and all that. Right. Well, the benefits, the benefits would be, would start up early. The benefits would be equivalent to higher, um, retirement, but you also have that for a shorter period of time, theoretically, because that mm -hmm. person wouldn't be here. So when you give us the resume and everything, can Paul Sebesta also give us what the budgetary impact of it is? You bet. That would be great. We'll Thank you. Together. Okay, terrific. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Right, because it's the retirement. It's all of it. Right. Um, number 38 is a resolution appointing and uh, promoting a lieutenant. We're uh, currently in the process of doing interviews for uh, the three sergeants who are on the civil service list uh, for the lieutenant, so we can have a um, name for a recommendation to the board for uh, town board meeting at the end of the month. <laughs> um, that's a uh, that's in the budget uh, lieutenant's position. Um, we carried over from last year. Um, and then the last thing I have is just an add-on which is a resolution to call for a public hearing to amend uh, chapter 55 of the code of the town of Niskayuna for emergency alarm systems. And it's a public hearing uh, to talk about the discontinuing the monitoring of alarms at the Unified Communication Center, uh, which is the dispatch center for the county. So I Thanks, have any more questions? No? Thank, you. Thank you. We skip Paul Sebastian in the beginning. Sorry for being tardy. Um, number one, a resolution calling for a public hearing regarding uh, proposed local law to extend the residency um, eligibility for the position of town controller. This is uh, in recognition of a significant shortage of qualified personnel to fill this position and in hopes that uh, an expanding as have uh, other communities in the area will be able to uh, draw on a larger, larger pool of candidates. Pretty simple. It's, um, and it requires a public hearing and a local law. Um, number two is a resolution adopting uh, revisions to the employee handbook for 2020. We have a meeting coming up to uh, review those changes and uh, and. This is done annually, it got delayed for various reasons, but um, ideally this should have been done in December for January 1st, but better late than never. Um, number three uh, is a resolution adopting rules and procedures for the legislative committees of the town board. Um, and yeah, um, and I think this is gonna be also discussed at the employee, during, uh, when we're reviewing the employee handbook, is that what I, yeah, yep. Yep. yep, I think folks had questions, so we could, you know. Yep. Yeah, that'd be great, right? Do you have, you have, yeah. Right? If we have questions, we could talk about them now. You've oh. submitted some questions. Yeah, right? I, um, well, I was, I, I personally was not uh, on some committees that I had been in the past, and I uh, pointed out that there was no procedure for the finance committee to approve items that traditionally were you know, is in our purchasing policy, um, and Alexis has incorporated those changes. So you're good with those. Um, yeah, yeah. I that was all I had. But um, were there additional questions then? I would like to go through it in the meeting. I would like to go through all the whole document. It's been an issue that's been raised that would help with transparency, but we haven't really had any conversation about it. So let's just have a conversation about it. I want to understand it a little bit better. Okay. Great. Just Thank you. There are questions here. We yeah, no, I've said three times that I was going to have them. Yeah. The we'll go part. through the document. We'll be given the, the document and we'll go meeting. through it. Yeah. yeah. The document's been circulated though. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I got it at the board meeting the other night. I got it the day before. So 
Okay, and number four is a resolution regarding uh, budget modifications. It's a very short list. It's um, just the one modification to um, to be prepared in the event our offer for the purchase of uh, the property on River Road is accepted by the bank that holds the mortgage, I guess it is. Um, and I do want to point out that um, we had a discussion in finance about potential sale of property. If that doesn't go through, um, the result of that would be a immediate budget modification, eliminating and recognizing that that revenue stream, revenue item isn't going to materialize and fund balance will have to, to make up that gap, um, which can be done. And uh, also with the um, the bio waste that our superintendent Warren Sewer spoke about, if there are any further delays in that, we're gonna have to start recognizing that loss of revenue of over $500,000. That's the prudent thing when you, as soon as you realize a revenue stream isn't gonna materialize, you have to keep the budget in balance. It's part of balancing the budget. So um, it's kind of a, yeah. Well, we had budgeted the sale of real property of 40,000, correct? It's no. either 40 or 50. I'm I think that's 40. I, I know it was 70 in previous years, and then we took that down to 40, I believe. Okay. Might have been 50. That's one or the other. It is one or the other. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're close, always. Okay. That's it. All right. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Before I make a motion to adjourn, I'm going to make a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to public officer's law, section 105, subsection F, for discussions that will necessarily include matters leading to the appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person. In addition, we will discuss a collective bargaining agreement. So could I have a motion? Or could I have a second on that motion? Second. Thank you. All those in favor, signified by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're now going to enter into executive session. At the conclusion of executive session, we will be adjourned. We will not be discussing any further business this evening.